Sawyer from Beekeeping Made Simple and this is about how to get bees out of your honey super. So there are a few different ways to do it and the way that most hobbyists do this if you only have a few hives is to pull the frames out one by one, get the bees off of them, put them into a container that doesn't have bees that you can close up. So this is the way I would do it is pull off the lid and get your smoker going. I'm going to put my gloves on. I usually don't wear gloves while working with the bees, but their big bloom just ended and they're not happy about it. This is one of the times bees naturally can be aggressive and it doesn't last well, but um, I'd like to avoid getting stung a lot on my hands. And they'll, they'll calm down, but when a big bloom season ends, they usually get kind of not happy. So, good. smoke this box to get a lot of bees to go down. But if you're harvesting comb honey, which is what we primarily do at the farm, I don't do this step because wax is very porous. It will absorb the smell of the smoke and your honeycomb will taste smoky. So then what you're going to do is, you know, just start and pull out your frames and take the bees off. Now the benefit to this way is that if you have a frame that's not ready for harvesting, you can set it aside and just take the ones that are ready. It's also possible, especially in that third box from the bottom, that you might have a little bit of root somewhere in there. So you can leave those frames in and, and not take them by accident. If it's not 70% capped, then you shouldn't harvest it because there's too much moisture in that honey. And it's really tempting to take it anyway, but you have high moisture content in your honey. That honey is possibly going to ferment and will go bad in just a few months instead of lasting forever. So, if you have frames that aren't capped and you especially live in a place with a frost, then leave that for the bees. They're going to be bringing in more honey in the fall, which is a harvest you're, is something you're not going to harvest. So those are good frames to leave for the bees to finish filling up. Okay, so you have your frame of honey that you want to harvest. What you want to do is first get most of the bees off. So you're going to put your thumbs on top of the top bar of the frame on either ear. Put the rest of your fingers down below the ear. Pick the frame up and then bring it down really fast and then stop very fast. And do this over the beehive so the bees go into the hive. Do it two or three times and you'll see most of the bees are off. Then I take a feather. Um, some people use bee brushes, but I found that bees absolutely hate to be brushed. Feathers work way better. This is a turkey feather, you know, whatever kind of large feather you can find or buy and just get the rest of the bees off. It's really that simple. That's it. Now, the next step, the final step, is to put it into a container that you can close up so bees don't get to it. What I do is I have my honey super right here. I put that frame into a honey super that's sitting in a large trash bag and I just loosely close the trash bag up and that's enough to keep the bees from getting back inside. And then you can still get your hands in those handholds through a trash bag, uh, put it in a cart or just carry it back to your house to harvest. 
Now, some people use a blower instead of a feather to get the bees off, but if you're gonna do it that way, make sure you have someone to help you because the person with the blower should be 20 to 30 feet away from the frame with the bees on it. You don't wanna be using a blower too close to the bees. Uh, however, I don't really find that uh, to be necessary. I think a feather works really well. You can also make an escape board or buy one. What you do is you take your telescoping inner cover and the escape board is a piece that goes over this oval hole right here. And you put that right here and then you would put the honey super you wanna harvest above your escape board. And so the bees will try to get through that hole to get down into the lower section of your beehive and then they can't get back up into the super. So you wanna put this on about 48 hours before you're gonna harvest so that you give the bees time to get through that escape. You're still gonna have bees in your box though. So when you go to harvest, what you're gonna do is take the lid off and then you're gonna take your box and you're gonna slam it on top of a pile of empty boxes which I'll show you right now. So what you wanna do is just give it a good slam. You have your empty boxes, you have your box you wanna get the bees out of. You just And the bees that are still in this box, a lot of them will fall down to the ground. And you can take this box. The final thing you can do, which is what commercial apiaries do, when I worked for a bee farm that had 4,000 hives, in order for them to be able to harvest very quickly is they used fume boards. So what that is, is it's a board that kind of looks like an outer cover. The top is going to be black or metal and the sides are going to have a lip. But this is going to be smaller than your regular cover because this lip is not going to go on the outside of the beehive but sit on top of the beehive. And so inside is a fabric so that you're going to take, you can buy the Fisher's Bigo, or there's a, a bunch of different brands that make them. It's essentially like an almond essential oil, or they call it bitter almond oil. And you spray it or pour a little bit on the inside of the lid, and then you put it on top of the beehive. And the sun heats it up, and it releases a scent inside that Elpermose Super that gets the bees out of it because they don't like the smell. It usually takes about five minutes. So what we would do at this farm with 4,000 hives is you would open up your hive, you would put your oil inside, and you would put this on top of a beehive. You go do something else, come back five or 10 minutes later, you would take this off, put this on top of another beehive, and you would pull the Super off. Then you would go to that beehive. So the fume board would be on one beehive while you would be pulling the supers off of another beehive. And that way you don't have to stand around waiting five minutes for the scent to dissipate. If you live in a place that's not sunny enough to be able to heat up your board, you can also make one that's essentially just a frame that has like a cheesecloth over it and then that will allow a breeze to come in and that's called a breeze board I believe and that helps to release the scent in the, to the high faster because it allows the air to to flow down and through the scent. Now these aren't these aren't really necessary if you only have a few hives. It's, it's kind of overkill um, and you're still gonna have bees in your box. So after we would pull a box after using the fume board, you would still have to do what I just showed you before, take your super and slam it over a box of empty supers to get more bees out. And so when you would use a fume, when we would use a fume board at this commercial apiary, we would be putting it on a truck and we would be driving it to a warehouse and it would be kept in a room in a warehouse. If you're bringing it into your house, fume boards don't get all of the bees out even after you shake the box and even just like a handful of bees per super can, can add up and that could be like 20 or more bees that are now flying around your house and annoying your family and that's not really ideal. So uh, really frame by frame is the best way to do it if you're bringing your honey into your home. If you're not bringing it into your home and you have more than a couple of supers, then you can use the fume board. And they work okay, but I mean, they're not, 
they're not this like magic solution that gets every bee out. Commercial operations use it because they're bringing their bees back to a warehouse where it's not a big deal if there's a handful of bees on each frame. Uh, at this farm I worked for, we had a beehive that was outside the honey extracting room and all of those uh, straggler bees that hitched a ride on the truck that were still in the supers that we brought back with us would go over to that beehive usually and, and join that hive. So that's how you can get bees out of your honey super. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in, down below in this video. I get back to everybody that comments on the videos and love to hear what you think about my tips and how I keep bees. Don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful. It really helps to promote our videos and subscribe so that you can be notified every week when we put a new video out. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you want to see the full process to harvesting honey, and how much honey you should take, how to prevent it from fermenting, and the full extraction process and the crush and strain process, check out our online classes at beekeepingmadesimple.com. You can type in YouTube as a promo code at checkout and you'll get 20% off of the class, which is like, I think saves you over $30. It's a pretty good deal.